new questions surrounding the near collapse of our country's financial system. They emerge every single day. Joining us now, Phil Angelides. He's the chair of the commission overseeing it all. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. It's good to be with you. Uh, appointed here by, by the president uh, about a year ago now. What have you guys accomplished so far when you look at the financial crisis, what needs to be done, addressing the core issues? Well, we're in the middle of our investigation. We've got 50 investigators and researchers working full time. Between now and Labor Day, we're going to do a whole set of public hearings. In fact, April 7th through 9th, we're going to have the Federal Reserve and Citigroup and Fannie Mae and the Office of the Controller of the Currency in front of us. So we're doing a thorough investigation, the investigation the American people deserve, mm -hmm. into what brought our financial system to its knees. But, you know, I think what uh, infuriates some people out there is the fact that there have, uh, other than the two executives from Bear Stearns or the two traders who have been exonerated, there have been no criminal charges in this entire financial fiasco, uh, and yet it took the American taxpayer hundreds of billions of dollars, really trillions when you look at all the, the guarantees from the Fed, uh, to bail out these institutions. Will we see any charges brought forth? Well, we have the ability to refer matters to the Justice Department for prosecution. We were given the power of subpoena. We have the ability to get documents, interview witnesses. We're interviewing hundreds of people. We already have received about uh, 580,000 documents. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a thorough investigation. And you're right. Look, there's been no accountability, no responsibility. You know, some people say, well, gee, the banks paid back their TARP money, but the damage to this economy is enormous. Sure. 27 million people out of work, $12 trillion in household wealth lost. Uh, not to speak of, as you said, the trillions of dollars of taxpayer money that went to float Wall Street establishments. I want to talk about Lehman Brothers uh, in particular because, of course, we saw uh, the 2,200-page report out um, about Lehman Brothers and what brought that company to its knees and a real focus there on the so-called Repo 105 maneuvers. Uh, is this something that you think is widespread across the industry, not just Lehman Brothers? Well, here's what's troubling. Lehman's the only firm that's had this kind of full scrub. The uh, bankruptcy examiner spent $38 million in 15 months and found, of course, that Lehman was moving anywhere between $38 billion and $50 billion off its books Right, for and a the few issue days. here is transparency. Well, yeah, but also there's a deeper issue here. It's not just that it was transparency, but it looks like there was either wholesale avoidance of regulation and also, let's be candid, a lot of deregulation that, that pulled back. Uh, there was an article in the New York Times yesterday where federal examiners from the Federal Reserve, the SEC, were in layman looking at the books. Um, in a sense, you know, without prejudging this, the same situation as Madoff, where the information was there. And I think the real question is, is this widespread? We've only looked at one firm. But what do you do about the issue? You have executives at many of these firms that do not know everything that's happening below them, if you will. And truthfully, they can't. So you have well, the executives coming out and say, well, I didn't know that this was but, going but on. So who do you hold accountable? Well, you, I always believe that you've got to hold people accountable at the top. That's why they're the CEOs. And, and let's be candid. There's neither answer is good. Either you knew or you didn't know. And if in fact, if these allegations are true, that 38 to $50 billion each quarter is being moved off the books, seems to me that's something a CEO should know. In terms of the, the broad charter that's, that you're tasked mm -hmm. with sort of combing through, what is it, 20-some uh, areas of inquiry, what's the most critical right now? Well, look, we're looking at some very critical areas. Subprime lending, what happened on the ground, what kind of mortgages the people were offered, how they were securitized, how are they sold to Th investors. This is all looking back, if you will. It, absolutely. So how look, does it help us? Well, anytime there's been... An accident, for example, the National Transportation Safety Board, they do a thorough examination of what caused the plane to crash. They look at the black box. Right. In a sense, we're doing that kind of examination. We're, in a sense, America's like another metaphor. Uh, we've had a major heart attack. You've got to do the diagnosis. Or, or if you don't, you'll go back to doing what you were doing. And I think it's critically important, given what we've been through, to do an examination. And let's be candid. I think there's a lot of people in Washington, on Wall Street, who aren't anxious for this. And, and as the chair of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, quite a title, uh, what can you tell the American people they are going to get at the end of your work here? Well, my hope is that they will get more of the truth about what happened. Look, we're only 50 uh, investigators, an $8 million budget. My goal is that more of the truth comes out about what happened to our financial system. Phil Angelitas, thanks so much for joining us. Good.